Good morning, friends. Good morning, His Church London. It is good to be with you again today on our um, weekly devotion. And uh, I've got some thoughts I want to share with you and just speak into our season. You know, good morning, Justine. It's so good to see you. Just want to speak into our season of what God's been saying. Hello, Johan. How are you guys doing? We're praying for you and your family and we love you and we miss you. Wish we could see you. But um, I'm going to just jump straight into it. So I want to do pick up on what God's been saying in the season and actually um, and just speak into some things. You know, sometimes you read the word, and you think, oh, that's weird. Or somebody communicates something and you think, oh, I'm not too sure about that. And those are good. That's it. That's I almost want to say it's a good place to be if our hearts are right, because it's always good to take the word and it's always good. Hello, Lana. It's always good to come and, and sit with God and say, God, what does this mean? Before we just dismiss everything, because some things in the word don't make sense. And if you're like me, there's times where you read it and you go, God, I don't know what this means. And so I'm going to read it, but I'll, I can't make, make heads or tails of it. So I'm just going to move on. And so I want to try this morning to use some words that have been thrown out there that might be brand new to you and me that might cause us to feel a bit weird because we're still trying to figure those things out. But I want to put it in the context of who God is. And hopefully, you know, that I'm going to basically go through a process of um, maybe my thought process and just let you in into that because I 100% believe with everything in me is that the, the Bible in its entirety and its wholeness has to be interpreted in its wholeness and read in its wholeness and received in its wholeness. We can't isolate anything and we can't um, magnify one scripture over the other because then I do believe we'll get an imbalance. Like I do believe that. I'm not saying I'm a the theologian by any means. I'm busy doing a course at the moment with theologians and you think you realize how much you don't know. But what I do believe for us, us everyday Christians who are trying to walk our life with Jesus and trying to understand something, we have to take it in the fullness of what the word says, Old Testament and New Testament together. Because I've just got this, this, this picture in my spirit that when we take the principles and the promises of the Old Testament with the revelation and the fulfillment of what Jesus did in the New Testament and we put them together, it is ingredients for an explosion to take place in our lives, in our atmosphere, when we understand all of it, not when we're not when we're taking a part and trying to interpret it by itself or highlighting something above the other. It is God is God and he doesn't contradict himself. He does make it interesting in the way that we're navigating his words. And I'm sure he has a chuckle sometimes, but he is big enough. And I am convinced of this. He is big enough that by his spirit within us, he wants us to know him. He knows how you think. He knows how I think. He knows how we process. He knows what we're, um, we're concerned about. He knows how we receive things. And by His Spirit, allow Him to be your teacher. And I, wanna, I want to say that because, you know, we all, so many things are lost in translation and so many things are lost in our communication styles and cultures. But the Bible was written in a time and a culture and a context. And so we need, to, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to be our teacher when we read it. And do you know the Bible says we know in part? Do you know that part I'm coming to realize is so minute that there is so much more to learn. So before we shut down, let's, let us allow the Holy Spirit to take us into the new. Because when something's new, it is foreign. It feels unfamiliar. It feels strange. And so maybe we're in a season where God's saying there's new, there's new, there's new, there's new. Before we shut down, let's bring it back to who he is and the purity of him, not in, not in the limitations of how people communicate. And so I'm asking you for that grace today as I speak as well. And so this is what I wanted to speak to you about. It's a scripture that I was reminded of, and I'm going to start there and I'm going to jump right in and go through a thought process with you. It's in Exodus 20 verse 19, and it says this. No, it's not verse 19. It is verse 24. And it's basically God is speaking and they're in the wilderness to Moses and he's saying, this is what I need you to do. Make an altar of earth for me and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, your sheep and your goats and your cattle. This is the part. This is the scripture I'm speaking about today. Wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. 
Do you know, if you just break it down, I am not an, um, an English professor. If anything, I barely can speak English well. But um, even that sentence wasn't great, but it doesn't matter. It says, if wherever I cause my name to be remembered, and wherever you, call, you respond to that, I will come and bless you. Now, let's just stop there for a second. This is what God is. This is the God we serve. He says, I have caused, so just wherever I, I cause my name to re, be remembered means he's done something in our lives that causes us to go, God, this was you. You moved in the season. You moved right over here. It's like if we stop for a second, he says, wherever I, not wherever we think he's moved on our behalf, but he will make himself known in our lives. And so this is what that scripture says. Wherever I make myself known, where I make myself uh, um. I cause my name to be honored. There's a causing, meaning he's done something that's got our attention. And so our, res our heart response is to worship him, to honor his name, to stop for a minute and actually go, God, you stepped into this, this moment. Watch what he says then. He says, wherever I cause my name to be honored, which means he's just done something. Now we're honoring him. He will come and bless us. It is a double... It, it's like, I can't, I can't even, I don't have the right language to, to, to express what's in my spirit. It's like, he's like, if you would acknowledge me when I make myself known and you honor me, there is more to come. There is more to follow. And so I want to say, this is the God we serve. We're not serving a God that is waiting for us the whole time. He's not waiting for us. He is advancing. He is, he's decided who he wants to be and who he is. And if you read all these leadership books and material that is phenomenal, we should always be learning and, and, and moving forward. One of the biggest scriptures, or not scriptures, one of the biggest statements that, I, that, that, I've, that has gripped my life is, when you wake up in the morning, have you decided what sort of person you want to be? How, have you decided when you walk into your meeting room, how you're going to pitch up? How, what sort of impact do you want your life to have on those people around you? Now, let me, that, that's us, right? We get to make that decision on a daily basis. God has already decided who he is. He's already decided the God he wants to be and how he wants to treat us. And it's right there. He goes, I've already decided I'm going to bless you. When you honor me, I'll bless you more. When you know, acknowledge me, I'll make myself known even more. And there's scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament. It says to those who have much, not much material stuff, but much desire, purity, want more, want to know more, want to see more. God says, I'll honor that. And so because you're searching for me, you will find me. He says like there's this constant, you can never outgive God. I mean, immediately in this scripture, everything blows your mind. He says, wherever I cause my, my name to be honored and you honor it, he says, I will do even more. Now, that's just the introduction. So track with me for a second. See, there's so many ways of interpreting the Bible, which we all know. Sometimes you read it and you know it's a scripture for somebody else, correct? You know that it's something that could actually just encourage them, reminding them of God's goodness and sovereignty and their situation. Sometimes it's really personal and God's bringing a little bit of a, hey, Maybe you should um, pay some attention to that thing in your life. Or maybe it's just speaking into a new season that he's going, look, I'm going before you and I'm preparing a way. And he's just gathering your faith and comforting you in that place. But there's so many ways of interpreting one scripture. Amen. And so there's, there's that literal sort of this is for me, for my season right now. Or it could be metaphorical going, okay, there is something God did and we can learn something from that and we can draw something from that and there's a principle that work in that. But there, there is no way to say there's only one way that God speaks to us. And so I want to speak about this scripture because in the last season, <clears throat> there's been words like Sabbath spoken. And we like, we're not scared of the word Sabbath. We're not. I, I'm not. But it's, it's. It, it depends on how we're reading it. Is it a metaphorical? Is it a literal? Does it apply to me? Does it apply to something that's been completed? Feasts. Like what, what are these feasts? All these things. And I just want to say like, let's get back to who God is. Because at the end of the day, this, this story is being spoken to the Israelites. They have just been delivered from Egypt. They're on their way to the promised land. Now I'm going to show you an example between metaphorical and literal. Literally, they were delivered from Egypt, find themselves in a place of the wilderness while they are being moved and towards and directed towards the promised land. As, how does that story apply to us? It is our story. 
we were, de we were delivered, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, we are the same thing. We were delivered from slavery, the slaves being slaves to sin and masters that were, uh, had dominion over us. He delivered us when Jesus' blood was shed for us on the cross. You know, remember the Passover, the blood on the doorpost? Jesus' blood washes us and cleanses us and allows us to be set free. He delivers us from Egypt and he takes us into the promised land. Now we know that fulfillment, that fullness of that promise is what Jesus did on the cross. And that's why we get to step into it. However, there's another part that I just want to draw our attention to. We live in the fullness of what Jesus has said. However, he hasn't come back again. And we've also been told that this life we're living here on earth is temporary. So the word wilderness, you can see it as a wilderness as in um, I'm going through a wilderness season means we're going through a season of transition or maybe a, a bit of a hard place. Do you see how many ways you can look at the Bible? But what else literally is that we're actually in a temporary place between what Jesus has done and when Jesus comes back again, there is a season of wilderness. There's different ways. You, are you guys following me? And so as Christians, we're in a season of transitioning and becoming and learning more about him while we wait for his return. Not taking away from what he's already done on the cross. Not taking away and saying those things don't matter anymore. Every single thing that's in the Bible matters because why? The Bible tells you it matters. And if we believe the Bible to be true, then we have to believe what it says. And so these are, this is where I am. And so... You know, in this Old Testament, in this, this story, this specific scripture, God is speaking to Moses and he says, I want you to build altars. I want you to build altars so that you can come to me with your offerings. Now we know it's complete in Jesus. We, we know that he died once and for all. We know that he shed his blood so that we can have life. His body was bruised and broken so that we can have healing. That is the foundation upon which we read the fullness of the story. There is power in understanding this. We're not waiting for the, the next thing to happen other than the fact that Jesus is coming and it's all going to be restored. But what I want to speak to you about in this, in the light of what God's been speaking in this season, right? He says, I require altars. Now, what he says here is altars made of stone. Why is that significant? Because bricks are made are human made, are, are people's way of doing things. Even the Tower of Babel, they decided they weren't going to build the Tower of Babel out of stone, which is natural, which God created. They were going to build it out of bricks and mortar, which was human influence. Yeah. And this is what God's requirement is. He's saying to them, I require altars upon which you can bring your sacrifice. Why? Why stone? Number one, it's not about what um, we can do to make it look like we're serving God so wonderfully. It's also stone because he's already made a way for us. He's created that place for us to worship him. And he says, and stone means anywhere you can erect it. He's not made it difficult for us to come to a place of remembering and and worshiping him and offer you can do it in your home because what's that word wherever wherever means wherever he's not limited to a time a place a space he's saying wherever you remember me so this is the other thing old testament look forward to what god's doing new testament where we're living right now we're remembering everything jesus has done and so what it says here is Easily to erect. The altars of stone were easily and able, able to erect. And God is more concerned with what's going on in our hearts than what's actually going on outwardly. He's not concerned about what it looks like. What I found really interesting as well is that at this point, and these altars, is that God actually required them to be altars as a, a temporary sort of place of worship and remembrance and sacrifice. Because when they were finished, these altars weren't stable enough to, to stay forever. They were, they were meant to actually molder away or fall over or something so that the, the altar itself couldn't become a place of worship and idol. Isn't that phenomenal? Because this is what God is saying. He's saying there's a cycle. There's a coming back. There's a constant coming back. It's not about the altar. It's not about where you build it. It's not about what. It's about that. Do you remember me? Do you remember me? And so just track with me for a little bit. It says, um, also, they were in a, a, this instruction was given in a wilderness state. And so I can't help but think, you know, 
we can't dismiss it and say we don't have to do this anymore because we are still in a wilderness state waiting for Jesus return. And so there's messages being spoken right now, which might feel uncomfortable, but just hear me. We're in a temporary state. Jesus himself said, this is how you need to pray. It's a constant reminding our father who art in heaven, come back to the place. He's honored. He's never stopped being honored. Jesus hasn't stopped dying on the cross. I mean, he's done it once and all. What he's done hasn't run out. It does, it's not null and void. It is the power that that just the power unto salvation that's life and death into life and, and, and brokenness into wholeness. That's it. it. It's the substance is what Jesus has done on the cross. And he, he, he says, this is how you need to do. You come back. Our Father who art in heaven, this is forgive us our sins. Now we believe that he has forgiven our sins. He's removed it from the east into the west. He's wiped it from his memory. But why would Jesus still tell us to come into that place and say, God, my heart. If there's anything that I've done that has caused me to move away, to move out from this place, it's a constant reminder, not for him, for what he's done, but for us and the lives that we're called to live. And so he's a, bring us today our daily bread. Who's our source, God? You're our source. Lead us not into temptation. God, because you know what? I messed up yesterday. I'm coming back to you. And so we build this altar. It's temporary because why? It is, we're human He's God. He's pitched up every day the same. And we get to every day make that choice going, today again, God, you and me. Today again, God, whatever it is. But now I want to work backwards, right? In all the places where I've called my name to be remembered, there's no need for a fixed building or a fixed or specific place because God is where you are. It says wherever two or three are gathered, there's that word again, wherever, wherever. It is everything we are guys it's this this life we're living in what we're moving into it's actually to be consumed with who god is what he's doing what's his spirit saying to you where's what's he moving in it might not be in the language that you would choose to use but what's the spirit of god saying into you it says wherever i cause my name to be remembered it's not what we invent not what we when we remember he's like i will make myself known see to move into the wholeness, like I said to you, it's actually taking the fullness of what God is saying and in the Old Testament and marrying it up with the completeness of what the Holy Spirit is and using all of that for our lives until he comes again. See, um, when you hear the words that have been spoken in this last season and what's been preparing us for the next season is there's been a call to remembrance. These are my words, guys. A call to remembrance, a call to not celebrate a day. Let's call, excuse me, let's use the Sabbath. It's not about it being Friday. It's about the, the person, the Lord of the Sabbath. It is Jesus. It is coming back to that place saying, God, in you I find my rest. In you I find my forgiveness. In you I find my healing. In you our lives revolve around. Our weeks revolve around. Because you know what? T day and night has not ceased to exist. Weeks have not ceased to exist. Seasons have not ceased to exist. Summer, winter, autumn, spring, there's a constant moving forward. Months keep moving. Years keep moving. There's the cycle thing. Nothing has ceased to exist. But if you break it all the way down, we, we quote the scripture. We hang on to the scripture. We've messed up yesterday, but today we can start again. Why? Because it says his mercies are new every morning. See, what God is doing in this season, whether you want to hear the word feasts of tabernacles, Passover, um, Sabbath, it's a constant gathering going, remember me, remember me. Because why? As humans, we move away from it. It's not about the acts of the day. It's about the heart of what's happening on those days of remembrance. And if we really were to break it down, it's a daily thing. It's a daily, his mercies on you every morning. His mercies on you every morning. You have your day, you have your night, you start again tomorrow, you remember him. You wake up and you remember him. You sit down, you have communion because God says, whenever you, you do this, there's that word again, whenever, do it all the time. You have communion and you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So whatever we're doing, we're not doing in the next season. And I want to challenge you. It cannot become an idol. The things that are being spoken, it's not, it's not the, the words that are being spoken or the labels that are it's being given. It's the heart of coming back to God, constantly coming back to God. And it is an altar that, is, is that you're building. But the thing about an altar is you constantly come back. We don't worship God once and think we've done it. We don't, we don't um, 
bring in my sacrifice of praise and go, there you go, I've done it. It's a constant invitation. He says, I inhabit the praises of my people. Come to me, keep coming. And it's that constant, we build altars of worship and bring sacrifices of praise. We keep doing this thing because it's the constant coming back to him. And it's, and it's required. He's saying, because it's not something that it becomes an altar of, I worship God this way. He's like, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in your heart. Will you keep coming back to me? Jesus, the center of it all. And bringing back, not once, not, not once, not just I've done it and Jesus, you've said this, but living in that place of saying, God, keep my heart pure. Keep my heart holy. Bring me, bring me to that place. Transform me. But how's this, you see? Even everything coming back to the scripture, and I'm closing now, coming back to that scripture, God says, wherever I cause my name to be honored, there, you know, let me not misquote it. I will come to you and I will bless you. Do you know, every time you build an altar in your heart, in your mind, in your coming together, re remembering who God is, giving him praise and honor and, and, and thanking him, he's like, there will be a blessing in return. There, you, we can't out thank him. We can't out bless him because every time we, we step into his presence, there is a release of more. There is a release of being able to do more, understand more, um, be more, not more physical realm. There's, there's an enabling power. There's, there's a transformation. When we worship him, his presence comes. That is a gift, guys. When we worship him, his healing flows. When we worship and we get our attention and our eyes on him, there's peace that surpasses all understanding. You cannot pay for that stuff. Yeah, and, and it's just this constant thing. So the more we come to him, the more we come back in line with him, the more we go, God, I'm honoring you. Give us today this daily bread. Now it is these feasts that we're talking about, these Sabbaths that we're talking about, these, this, this cycle that we're talking about. It's not about the day. It's about remembering the journey that we're on and the God that's leading us. And it's our heart thing saying, God, lead me back. Bring me back to you. Lead me back to your peace. Lead me back to your presence. Lead me back to your, 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 your provision. Lead me back to your, your kindness, your forgiveness. Lead me back to your grace. It's a constant pulling back because when we step into that place, there is an overflow of everything that heaven has for us. And so it's that constant, who wouldn't want that? is my question to you. Who wouldn't want to live in that place? Where is this that constant, God, I'm coming back to you and we get everything God has. And so I want to encourage you in this new season, let the Spirit allow a new work in our hearts, whatever it is. And I'm not saying that, what am I saying? Choosing words. I'm saying if you want the new, let the new come and let the Spirit lead you because new is unfamiliar to matter who. No, no, to no matter who. It is new. And trying to find the language to express those things and trying to do those things. But it's not an idol. It is a, an invitation. It's not a, um, a principle of this is how you do it. It is a heart thing of devotion and purity. So I want to encourage you that if you step into the new, there might be things that God is requiring you to do. Actually, there most definitely will be. There will be things that he would want you to sacrifice on a daily basis of your opinion, your will, your um, interpretation or the thing that you've held so tight to and he's going, okay, there's more. So this is the thing. God gives you a glimpse of truth and then he builds on that truth. And so I want to say to you, we're not saying, I don't, the voice of God is not going to say the truth that you've already had as a foundation, just chuck it, we, we're replacing that unless it's faulty. But the truth of who Jesus Christ is and what he did on the cross is the foundation upon which we build everything. It is not replacing it. It is not pushing it to a side. And I want to encourage you, use that as your foundation to read everything through the Bible so that when you, upon that rock, that truth, who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross, then we will step into the fullness of who God is. And so I want to encourage you. I hope that made sense. I hope you're encouraged. And if God is inviting you into something new today, spend time with him so that he can prepare what's new, so that he can digest it with you and get with people speak to people start throwing some scriptures around start looking at it in its entirety because i tell you when we get the promises and the revelation and we understand what god has done
there's an explosion of wildfire that can break forth in our lives and our prayer lives and the way we see signs, wonders and miracles and the way we relate to God and the way we see what God's doing on this earth and he's going to use his church to rise up. What does that scripture say? That the church is not peripheral to the world, but the world is peripheral to the church. There is a there is something. He is hovering, he is brewing, and he is waiting. So let him do that in you. Amen. I love you guys. I hope this blesses you. Um, have an amazing week, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.